Well, the first map for Noya is finally complete. Well, at least the rough draft is. Uh, this week we're going to go over some of the difficulties that I had in creating this map, some sprite work, and some uh, layering issues. So let's get into this. So like I had said before, uh, I am using a... Uh, old Pokemon map that was a first gen map that has been upscaled to the fifth gen Pokemon as a reference for creating this map. So you can see that I've kind of traced a rough outline over it here and made some additional changes that uh, better suited what I needed the map to do. The tile set that I'm using is the Raven Fantasy uh, green forest tile set from Clockwork Raven. Uh, you should definitely go check him out. I had taken the map tile set into GIMP and bumped up the hue and saturation levels a little bit and tweaked with the lighting levels uh, to be more in line with what I uh, need for Noya. So that's why they don't the colors don't look exactly one to one with what you'll see on Clockwork Raven's site and what you have here in Noya. As I was going through and tracing out the map here, I realized that I was going to need a bridge. And while Clockwork Raven does have a bridge in this forest map tile set, it is not wide enough for what I needed. So the very first uh, major sprite work that I've done for uh, Noya so far is making this bridge. Here. Clockwork Raven keeps his tile set's color palette very uh, uniform across the whole thing. And orange here is going to be the same color orange there. So I was able to take the previous color scheme of the bridge that he had there and kind of cut and paste different pieces of it together and make one uniform looking large bridge. At the same time, I also had some issues with the way the dirt paths lined up inside of uh, the, his tile set. They kind of seemed a little lumpy to me and I needed them to be a bit more uh, uniform and slanted. So I cleaned those up as well and this is the end result of that. One of the issues that I was having with uh, was players not rendering in front of solid objects or behind solid objects when they were in front or behind them. And this is the way Unity handles top-down games like this. In Noya, you move along the X and the Y axis, and because of that, there is nothing to tell Unity that you should or shouldn't be behind or in front of something. Unity uses the Z axis uh, for that sort of calculation. And because we're not using Z, uh, the only thing that we can rely on is the sort order of the renderer. Well, nothing is updating this sort order dynamically, so if your sort order is larger than the sort order of the object, you're going to be rendered in front of it. And if it is smaller than the sort order of the object, you will be rendered behind it. This doesn't work very well for us because we need to be able to cross in front and behind things at a moment's notice. So what I did here is I set this late update function. This uh, late update runs after all of the animations, but just before the rendering engine does. And what this function, this simple math does, is it takes the y-axis of the player and magnifies it greatly so you, I get a much more fine control over it and then applies that number to the sort order of the player itself. Putting that all together now, you can see that we can move freely through this field of sunflowers and there's no weird janky hands floating in front of the sunflowers. Um, it looks very good. It looks like you're actually moving through uh, this field properly. Once I had the basic outline of the entire map laid out, it was time to start planting trees. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of trees. There are, I think, over a thousand trees planted here. I would start by placing the base of the tree on the actual tile so it lined up with the tile set and then moving a tree object on top of it. I use the tree objects because those will actually cast shadows so it'll look more forest-like uh, when the sun comes up and down. 
I, if I never have to plant another tree in this game again, it will be too soon. I had been doing some work on some of the monsters that are going to be spawning in this map here. A lot of the monsters that I have don't actually have death animations, and that kind of spurred on a little bit of a con discussion on the Discord server of whether or not I should make um, a death animation individually for each monster, or if I should go with a more generic death animation. Uh, Fantasy Online, every single monster would just tilt over um, and lie down in whatever frame of animation it was on and that indicated it was dead. Or I could go with maybe a more Zelda Wind Waker-esque style of animation where they just explode in a puff of dark black and purple smoke and leave behind a loot object of some sort, whether it's a bag or a chest. Still uh, trying to figure out how I want to do that. Um, right now it, it's a little, it's fun for me to uh, design little animations like this scorpion here so that way I can get some uh, art experience under my belt but if that workload becomes too large then we might have to go to generic uh, death animations but as of right now it's not that bad so this is the map in its entirety here um, we've got a couple of caves uh, like this one at the center of the map, this will most likely go to some sort of uh, beehive style dungeon. I'm looking forward to building that out. Um, the one at the north uh, east side is going to be where the players uh, move on from this map. That'll be the exit, so to speak. Um, and down here at the southeast side is actually going to be where the uh, group content is players will uh, find themselves inside of a narrow cave filled with monsters and at the end of said cave will be a clearing uh, that will be full of more group content in other news i have uh, secured some server hardware and a co-location place to put it so we should have uh, a live alpha client up here within the next month or so, I'd imagine. A um, couple of things that need to happen is we actually need to get stats assigned to these monsters and we actually need some skills to give to the players. Right now they just have basic uh, skills with no animations. So that's uh, what you can look forward to on the next one and we'll see you then. <laughs>